Hi everyone, hope you're doing well. In this video, we will be measuring output impedance of a function generator using a multimeter. In a previous video where we were measuring capacitance using a signal generator and a multimeter, uh, there has been like great comments linked down in the video description below. And thanks again for the, those great comments. And one of my viewers calculated the output impedance of my function generator at 460 ohms. So I decided to look into the maths and whether we can streamline uh, come up with an easy method so you can do the same as well. I hope it's going to be very, very easy and useful, especially if you are building your own function generators or amplifiers, etc. It will work for a lot of different circuits out there, but not all, especially if your output driver is doing something smart based on the load. But uh, for all general purposes, it's a good way and you get pretty accurate results. The function generator I have here is a Bitscope Micro a uh, USB scope with an arbitrary waveform generator on it. I looked at this data sheet to figure out what the output impedance is, but I couldn't find anything, but we will measure it and we will find it. And I have two multimeters here. One of them is your cheap dollar store variety multimeter. I just don't remember when I bought it more than 10 years ago. And the other one is a Bryman True RMS digital multimeter. So we will make the measurements with both of them and, and hopefully arrive at similar results. So there's not much going on on the circuit. I just need a breadboard and a 1K resistor. That's all we need. Obviously, as usual, I whipped up a small web app for you to take care of all the mats, even though it's very simple. It just simplifies things even further. I'll just pop it on the screen now. I'm just going to get rid of this multimeter for a while so we have more space on the screen. Let me turn on the signal generator. And you want to put it at no DC offset. Uh, one volt peak to peak, one volt is enough. It can go a little bit higher based on your multimeter, but it won't change the results much. And I want to put the frequency at uh, one kilohertz. We don't want to go higher than one kilohertz because we are on a breadboard. There's no proper termination here. Like there's a, we don't want the signal to be all over the place. Uh, one kilohertz is good enough for those measurements. All right, so first I want to get a clear read on my resistor. I know it's one kilo ohms, but I want to get a more accurate read on it and get rid of the component tolerances. It's 995.2 ohms. I'll just pop that into the tool. Now I'll just switch to AC readings in millivolts level. Our signal generator is at one volts. So one millivolts level is fine. And I will measure the open circuit RMS voltage on our signal generator. These are the uh, probes of our signal generator, positive and ground. Let's get in there. And we are looking at 349.37 millivolts. 349. 30. Seven. So the measurement unit here is volts. Uh, doesn't matter if you enter both values as millivolts, but uh, since it, they will cancel each other out. But for accuracy and correctness, I want to put it as 0 0.34937 volts. Now I will connect our signal generator to our one kilo ohm resistor and it will act as a load. And we want to get another measure now across the resistor which is 243.99 millivolts. And there we go. It's 484.41 ohms, uh, which was uh, very close to 460 ohms as calculated by our viewer in the previous video. Uh, now the multimeter I used is a true RMS multimeter from Bryman. Now I want to repeat the same measurements with a cheaper multimeter that's not true RMS. And let's see if we can arrive at similar results. Uh, just uh, put it in AC 1.5 volts range. And uh, again, I'll just disconnect the resistor and measure the open circuit voltage of our output. And we are looking at 0 0.38 volts, which is close enough to our previous reading. And now I want to repeat the same measurement when the signal generator is under load. We are looking at 0 0.26 volts. Let's put it into our tool. 
and this one is calculated as 459.32 the previous one is 484 so it's pretty close and well within the specs of both multimeters so that's pretty much all to it and hope you find it useful uh the link to the tool is down in the video description below and as usual let me know in the comments if you have any questions or problems with any particular signal generator or multimeter or with the tool thanks a lot for watching see you next time